This is a common pitfall for many students doing the TMUA. They don't know how to tackle these types of problems efficiently. Let's have a look. The real numbers x, y, and z satisfy x is bigger than y is bigger than z is bigger than 1. Which one of the following statements must be true? And we've got four different options here, all to do with well, two, either 2, 3, 5, or 7, and the, like, raising them to powers of x, y, z, and looking at an inequality. Okay, so what is the mistake some students make? Well, let me actually explain how we're going to solve this first, and then I'll explain what students normally do incorrectly. So this question is, which of the following must be true? In maths, statements can either be true or false. There's no in-between. If a statement is true, then in theory, we should be able to prove it. And certainly, if it was a TMUA question, we should be able to prove that it's true. Um, if it's a false statement, then there will be a counterexample, at least one counterexample. So three of these statements are false. One of them is true. And the three which are false, we should be able to provide counterexamples for. And the fourth one, I mean, by that point, we could just circle it and move on. But for the sake of this video, I'll also prove that that's true as well. So we're going to go through these one by one. Now, what we're essentially going to do is test and see if it's a counterexample. You know, each one of these has a, you know, in theory, a three quarters chance of being false. Um, so not or not necessarily being true. Let's start with option A here. Now, what's the thing that most students do is when they're looking for a counterexample, they just plug in completely random numbers, X, Y, and Z, which is kind of like, you know, Closing your eyes and throwing a dart at a dartboard is not very, you know, systematic. It's not you're not going to hit bullseye very often. Maybe you do. Uh, you get lucky, and the the first thing you try works. Um, so what could we do? Well, I'd say you know normally if it's like to do with n, when there's just one variable, start with small numbers for n. But in this case, we've got three different parameters x, y, and z, which we can all vary as long as x is bigger than y is bigger than z. One thing that we can do is also quite useful is actually think about limiting values, and that's what we're going to do here. Notice that informally, x is the biggest number, y is the middle number, and z is the smallest number. Crucially, I can make z as small as I want whilst being bigger than 1, and equally, I can make x as big as I want. Uh, I can make it a billion, a trillion, a, you know, a quadrillion, whatever. And that's the idea here. So when I'm seeing this left-hand side, I've got a small number, a nice and bounded number on the left-hand side. 2 to the z plus 1 is small, because z is small divided by a big number because x is large so or what, what could potentially be large so this left hand side i know that i could make as close to zero as i wanted by making x a really really large number because obviously if you divide by a large number you're going to get a very small number and also by making z close to one so this thing i can make near zero uh, if z is um so this is approximately zero if z is approximately one and x is approaching infinity or something. You know, that's very informal notation, but you get the idea. Okay, and what about on this right-hand side? Well, in fact, for those values, if x is approaching infinity, this thing here is going to be pretty large. So that's good for us in terms of getting, the, getting rid of this option because the left-hand side is near zero when x is large, and we've got that it's bigger than something, but this thing, the numerator at least, approaches infinity. So as long as the denominator is quite small, uh, sorry, quite bounded, um, then, then, then this is fine. And we can easily just find an example. I can make z equal 2, y equal 3, and x equal 1,000 or a million or whatever. And the idea is the left-hand side is going to be super small. It's going to be near zero. And the right-hand side is going to be 10, 2 to the 10,000 plus um, you know, a small number, so roughly 2 to the 10,000 divided by 2 cubed. And that, for sure, is bigger than zero. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely not going to be an option. So that's the way that we're going to approach this and go through the options one by one. And at one point, we're going to get stuck and go, oh, hold on a second, maybe we can't find a counterexample. And that's going to lead us to think maybe this is true, we can then prove it's true. Okay, before I go through the other options, one thing I will say, so I studied maths at Oxford, I did do the MAT and the TMUA. And I'm actually now running a mathematics the TMUA masterclass series starting from the start of September. So if you want any more details on that, DM me TMUA on Instagram or email me at inquiry Inquiries, uh, oh, uh, inquiries at jpymathstutoring.com. I'll leave details for that in the description. Um, but yeah, if you're planning on doing the TMUA, that might be the course for you. It's for students who are doing okay in the TMUA, but looking to go up to grade eight, grade nine. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, option B, we've got two is bigger than three to the X plus three to the Z over three to the Y. Uh, again, we want to think about X and Y, X, Y, and Z taking limiting value. So is this true for all values of X, Y, and Z? Again, no, because you can see here, kind of similar to the first one, the right-hand side I can make as big as I want by making X tend to infinity and making Y and Z just nice and just bounded numbers. Um, because then the left-hand side, uh, the right-hand side, sorry, the numerator is going to approach infinity. And so this is going to approach infinity. And uh, so if I, again, just use, in fact, use the same example, Z is 2, Y equals 3, 
and x equals 10,000 is a counterexample for b. Okay, cool. C, we've got 2 times 5 to the x over 5 to the z is bigger than 5 to the x plus 5 to the z uh, over 5 to the y. Okay, uh, so the left-hand side here is large number divided by small number. Okay, cool. Um, so that's going to be very large. And on the right-hand side, I've got large plus small, small divided by medium size. Hmm. Okay, so this looks possible because this is obviously large, but this is also large, but we've got this 2 here. So maybe this 2 is doing something for us. So actually, it turns out that C is going to be the correct answer here. Um, but just before I prove this, let's just eliminate D. And we can eliminate D basically the exact same way we eliminated these guys. It's literally the same thing except 3 now. So we could use the exact same counter example. Z is 2. Y is... Oh, sorry, no, no, apologies. We can't use the exact same counter example. I've just realized the inequality is the other way around. So we need to think in the other direction. Okay, how could I make this thing super, super small? So it's less than two. Well, that again is possible. If I make, um, uh, if I make, um, so I want to make the denominator large, but the numerator um, also quite large. Uh, how can I do that? I can make x and y are very similar to each other. So I want the numerator and denominator to both be large, but basically the same value so that they essentially cancel out. And I can do that by making x and y both really, really large numbers. So if I make x 10,000 and one, let's say, or whatever that is, a million and one, uh, what is that? Maybe 10 million, whatever. And uh, y is just going to be one less than that. And then just make z a very small number. So 1.01. 1 .01. Uh, and then basically the numerator and denominator are essentially the same. I mean, the numerator will be slightly bigger than the denominator, but uh, it's going to cancel out to essentially one. It'll be like 1.1 1 .1 or something. Uh, but in, in particular, it won't be bigger than two. And so we can eliminate d through that. And so therefore, by process of elimination, the answer C. So at this point in the exam, I'd circle C and move on. But just to prove that C is indeed true, it must be true. The idea is, well, if we start on the left hand side, uh, two times five to the x, um, that has to for sure be bigger than five to the x plus five to the z. Um, because, well, five to the x is bigger than five to the z. And we also know that five to the z is less than five to the y, because z is less than y. And so therefore, one over five to the z is bigger than one over five to the y. So I'm just multiplying this thing here by this thing here. And then uh, because they're both bigger than and everything's nice and positive, I get option C. Um, and that for C is true. Awesome, cool. Um, yeah, that, that's exactly how we want to solve this problem. So just a reminder that these sorts of problems, if it's something must be true, remember a mathematical statement can either be true or it's false. If it's true, you should be able to prove it. If it's false, there should be a counterexample for it. And in this case, for these sorts of problems, if you think that something's false, the best way to convince yourself, uh, obviously, you know, it's marked by a computer, but if there was an examiner, best way to convince an examiner is just give an example, give a counterexample. So give explicit values of x, y, and z like I've done here to convince yourself, okay, cool, I'm 100% satisfied this statement is not true. Um, cool. Um, yeah, we'll finish there for today. I'll leave a video on screen where I solve another TMUA problem. In fact, I'll give you one of my own from my bank of problems that I use with my students, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you the interesting tricks there are to solving that one. Uh, as I say, if you are interested in joining the TMUA Masterclass, DM me on Instagram, TMUA, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.